The youth have time and time again been termed as the future. Everyone who gets themselves onto a podium to speak to young people would rally the youth to take on the realms of power. However, this has not always been the case. This morning on Your Voice, I speak to two young people who have gotten themselves into the circles of power. First up is the youngest Chief Administrative Secretary in the Ministry of ICT, Innovation and Youth Affairs, Madam Nadia Ahmed, and also joined by youth and media consultant Mahendin Joroge to expound on this youth and governance agenda. How are you guys? I'm very okay. fine. First up, perhaps I could start with uh, Madam. Yes. You have gotten yourself to this position. How did you get this far? I mean, one would ask themselves, <laughs> Well, truth be told, Sijuani Namtu, and I always tell people the first time I met the president was when I was being uh, sworn in in Mombasa at, at State House and this position came to me by surprise and that's because I was so focused on working with the community and young people and empowering women in the coast that I didn't even you know picture myself being here where I am but you know what it happened I'm here and I'm, I'm trying my best to really maintain that aspect of it. Mr. Mahende Jiroge, I yes. mean you have also gotten yourself in some very uh, Senior circles. Could you want an to ama? I think um, people only need to know what you can do. And uh, when some of these people realize your power to make things happen, a bit in generalism or even the way you relate with the people, definitely they pick up something from you that uh, they think that they can use also to better you know to, to to better you know either their career or even just work with them okay yeah how is it being the youngest cas or cas yeah. as i learned this morning yeah. in the country you see i'm young and i'm a woman so those are two elements <laughs> so but you know i don't let my gender and my age really define me so most of the time we'll go for meetings or at events Everyone looks at me and says, oh yeah, she's just here, she's coming to learn. And I know very well, sometimes my cabinet secretary just keeps quiet because he always tells them, if you let Nadia talk, mm -hmm. yeah. you will be shocked. And so once I talk, now everyone is like, wow, who trained you? Where are you from? This and that. But I usually just show them my intelligence and I show them that I'm capable of doing it. And so my age doesn't really bother me or affect me <laughs> anyway. When you speak to this uh, gentleman, right? Do they have the best interest at heart for young people? You see, our focus as young people, it's really not on what is best for us. We focus on other things. You know, our young people are so much on uh, like handouts and they think um, everything they need to have is, they, they don't have to work for it. Yeah. And uh, that to me, it's a very, very serious, you know, problem. And that is why, you know, like she said earlier, if a government uh, rolls out a program where young people need, uh, they, they want to be helped, the first thing they ask you when you, like, you go to the village, uh, what do you have for us? You know, because you know, they really don't know that you are coming in to help them uh, you know, with a long term, you are giving them a long term solution to mm. their problems. Yes. Right? So uh, to some extent, again, you, I mean, you wonder what kind of young people we have. It's really sad. You've interacted with the president. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does such a gentleman have the best interest at heart for young people? If the president didn't have the best interest at heart, I wouldn't be sitting here right now and talking to you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and that's clear cut. Mm -hmm. So before even I answer the question, I want to throw this one back. Okay. Do the young people have the national government programs at their best interest at heart? His Excellency the President, his cabinet, they have the best interest at heart. The problem now lies when it comes to number one, of course, it's communication. And that's because as young people, we don't allow the government to also understand us and communicate with us. Programs are being rolled out. At least try, let them fail, and then report back and say, this doesn't work that way. But that's never the case. The case is always that, oh, as he said, yeah. but again, I want to correct myself. I'm not saying 100% of the young people are like that. There are those who are actually, there's a 10% of them that I actually sit down with them and they really want progressive development. And that's because they've really invested in themselves. They've really understood that sustainability is more important than something that you're given just on one day. When the two of you sit with young people, do you advise them? Do you speak to them perhaps? I try to, you know, to tell them, you know, like in this world, 
nothing really comes easy. You know, in one way or the other, you have to work, you know, hard for it. There are serious sacrifices that you need to make because there will be no gain without pain. I try to talk to them every other day, every time I meet them. I tell them there's always a better way of, uh, you know, getting money. And now that the government is there, you know, like through the devolution, um, you know, young people can see, you know, that government is more closer, you know, to them. to them. So it's all about how you plan yourself, right? Like now we are heading to 2022. This will be a great opportunity for them to decide, do we need hand, uh, handouts or we want people who can help us? right who can take us you know yeah. a step further yeah right? okay mm. i do and i'm very very unapologetically honest with them i tell them nobody is going to come and help you in this world okay nobody is going to come and feed you a spoon mm. of sugar or salt so it's up to you you have to be able to identify what is it that you're passionate about or where is your strong element then from there start working for it and i always tell them one thing they always have to be ready to work for free you always have to tarmac for free before you can actually get to one thing. Okay. And then the last thing I always tell them is they have to understand that Kenya ni wow. If you really are passionate about your country, most of us wear this. Yes. If you are really passionate about it and it's your responsibility to build the next generation, then you will not allow Kenya to fall in whatever in way. In whatever mm, way. I Thank agree. you very much, guys, for honoring my invitation. So, well, this is it. As young people, we need to pick ourselves up and push for spaces at the table. My name is Brian Mushiri. Good morning.